Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace. Uh, Chris, it, it's it's piling up, you know. And to the yesterday from Charles Krauthammer, a conservative columnist, a syndicated columnist, and Fox News contributor, we got this among other things. I leave it to the lawyers to adjudicate the legalities of the unconsummated collusion, but you don't need a lawyer to see that the Trump defense collusion as a desperate democratic fiction designed to explain away an election loss is now officially dead. Uh, the, 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 the tide has turned, has it not? Well, I, I, I think you have to put it in context. Clearly, this was attempted collusion. Uh, it, it may have been bungled collusion. But the argument that the Trump uh, White House campaign before transition after that, uh, now the administration made that there was nothing to see here. So let's move on. That there was a hoax, that this was fake news, that there was no co serious contact or meaningful contact between Trump world and uh, the Russians. That's dead. That, that the credibility uh, of that is completely shot. Now, it may be that nothing came out of this meeting. That's at least what we're being told both by the Russians and by the, the Trump side. Wow. But you look at bla in black and white at those emails at uh, the, the former British tabloid uh, reporter turned publicist saying that this is information coming from the prosecutor, the Russian state prosecutor. This is part of an effort by uh, the, the Russian government to tip the election to Trump, and there's going to be damaging information about Hillary Clinton. And then you have the immediate response from Donald Jr. saying, I love it. Uh, there certainly was, as I say, at the very least, attempted collusion here. Steve Hayes, uh, pa panelist on Brett Baer's show at night, conservative, writes, the obvious question, this is from Twitter, if the meeting was a waste of time and a nothing burger, why lie after lie? To which Brit Brit Hume replied, good question. Here's another. If it wasn't a nothing burger, then what came of it? The lies, one after another, after another, after another, Chris, they are of note and, and worthy of reporting and worthy of considering as a constituent. Yeah, I think, you know, this really shouldn't be a matter of liberal versus conservative, pro-Trump versus anti-Trump. If you're a fair-minded citizen... Uh, you, you, you ought to be concerned about the fact that we were repeatedly misled about what this meeting uh, concerned. I had uh, Reince Priebus, the White House Chief of Staff, on this program at this desk a week ago last Sunday, uh, and he said this was a meeting about adoption. That was the story at that point. That was a story that had been approved by the White House at this point. I don't know whether uh, Reince, who's a good fellow, knew anything more about it or not, but that wasn't what the meeting was about, because as we learned later that day, uh, after all the Sunday shows were over uh, from the New York Times, not from anybody in the Trump world, that this was a meeting to try to get dirt uh, about Hillary Clinton. And then we learned on Tuesday, as I say in black and white from those emails, well, in fact, this was supposed to be, and what the Trump, Trump folks took the meeting to accomplish was the Russian government trying to give information about Hillary Clinton as part of an effort to swing the election to Donald Trump. So, you know, you're exactly right. We've been told a, a variety of stories. Uh, we've gotten, and who knows if, we're, if we've gotten to the end of the story. We, we thought we I, got to the end of the I story with the emails. Haven't. I now know we, we haven't because there's news breaking at this moment, Chris. Okay. Fox News can now confirm new, more. Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort, the lawyer from Russia, the interpreter, this new guy we found out about today, and a mystery person. John Roberts confirms there was an eighth person in that meeting. We don't know. There may have been more, but there was an eighth. Jared Kushner filled out his form. I think it's an F-86 saying who he'd met with and what he'd done. Very important stuff. You can go to prison for messing it up, you know, intentionally. He went back and added 100 names and places. None of these people made it. They, they, they're still not clean. We're still not clean on this, Chris. It's, if there's nothing there, and that's what they tell us, they tell us there's nothing to this and nothing came of it. There's a nothing burger. It wasn't even memorable. Didn't write it down. Didn't tell you about it because it wasn't anything. So I didn't even remember it with a Russian interpreter in the room at Trump Tower. If all of that, why all these lies? Why, why is it lie after lie after lie? If you clean, come on clean, you know? My grandmother used to say, when first we practice to, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. The deception, 
Chris, is, is mind-boggling. And there are still people who out there who believe we're making it up. And one day they're going to realize we're not and look around and go, where are we? And why are we getting told all these lies? <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. I think that, that uh, there's a lot of, the, of truth to everything that you've said. And as John Roberts pointed out, I can, look, I can understand why Donald Trump Jr. didn't want to put this information out. Those emails are certainly damaging, you know, to have somebody saying this is part of the Russian government trying to help uh, your dad win the presidency, and he says, if it's what you say it is, I love it. That's bad. But having said that, it, it's going to come out eventually. It did come out eventually. They ought to all sit down right now in the Oval Office, they, uh, in, in the White House. They ought to sit down, everybody that was involved in the campaign, and they ought to sit there and say, anybody you knew that, you know, any, from the first uh, time you had beef stroganoff to the last shot of Stolichnaya, you got, put down every contact with a Russian you know about, and let's get it out. It may be bad, it may be embarrassing, but we can't keep having this new information dribble out because, as you say, we still don't know whether a crime was committed. And I, I, let's no, be clear on that. We certainly we do, do not. We do not know if a crime was committed. We do know that we were misled a re number of times repeatedly about what went on at this meeting, what went on in other meetings. You know, look, we have a case, uh, Mike Flynn who lied to the vice president who came on this show in January and said that they never discussed sanctions. And then it turned out they did discuss sanctions. That, met, that ended up with uh, Mike Flynn being fired and the vice president uh, being hung out to dry. Come clean, tell it now, let the chips fall where they may. And if, in fact, there was no crime committed, you'll survive it. It'll be embarrassing, but it'll be better than this. Chris Wallace, and we'll be right back.